I've already restored the Chapter 3 backup file. Um, to get started, I'm going to go ahead and go to Home. Chapter 3 is about banking, and that's going to be in the bottom right-hand corner of your home area. So, and then I want to go ahead and go to the check register. Select the checking account and click OK. The check they want us to look at or examine first is, we're on page 3.6, is from November 15th to Sargent Insurance. So I'm going to go ahead and find that check. And I just right click on it and choose Edit Check in order to take a look at the actual check. Once you choose Edit Check, then the check will go ahead and open in the uh, um, right checks window. This will look similar to the picture on page 3.6. Notice that this check has cleared. That means that it has already gone through the bank and been reconciled and after you've examined the right checks window you're going to go ahead and close it with its X. That'll return you to the check register. This time we want to go ahead and do the quick report for the um, Sergeant Insurance. Notice I still have that check selected when I come up to the top and click click on quick report. The quick report will open a check register for all of the transactions and I want to um, filter that quick report so that I'm seeing all of them. It should have a total to Sargent Insurance of $21,698.98. Mine defaulted to all and you can see it does have $21,698 as my total for Sargent Insurance. If I were to turn this in, I would simply file, save as PDF, and I'd give it an appropriate name in order to save the file that I would turn in if that was a requirement of the example. I'm gonna, um, from there, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, once you save it as a PDF, if you want to highlight it, Check Register Quick Report, and it should open up in my PDF Viewer. Once I've opened it in the PDF Viewer, in this case they want me to highlight check 454, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the Highlighting Tool, find check 454, and select it. Ah, there we go, and should be able to highlight it. There we go. And so I would save it again, and that's what I would actually upload. Give it the same name, override it, now it's saved with that check highlighted. Then I'm going to go ahead and close the register quick report and close the check register. So I'm back to the home window, uh, home screen, and I'm going to go ahead and take a look at deposits. Those start on really page 3.10. So I'm going to go ahead and click record deposits. In this case, uh, first I have to choose the account that I want to make the deposit to. So I want to deposit it to my checking account. Oops, here's my payments to deposit. I want to make sure that uh, I don't want to deposit any of these, so make sure that they are not checked. There's no check marks. I click OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and make sure I am going into my checking account. I received a um, check from Rock Castle, so I'm going to go into my received from Rock Castle. When I tab, he's not currently in my account, so I'm going to go ahead and click Quick Add, and he's Other. And then the account that it's going to come from uh, is the, I believe it's Capital, yes, 30100 should come in as Capital Stock. He's made an investment, so I'm going to put a memo in there. He's given me check number 555. He gave me a check and the amount of the check is $72,000. Notice that once I press the tab and leave that, I've got the 72000 here. That's my deposit subtotal. That's the only check I'm going to deposit. So I'm going to go ahead and click the Print button, and it asks if I want to print the deposit slip and summary or only the summary. I want to print the summary only. It should come up to my Print dialog box. From here, I'm simply going to click Preview which should then open the report in a print preview and from there I should be able to save it as a PDF. And that's my mistake. I cannot save the deposit summary as a PDF so that will not be anything that you are ever asked to turn in. You can only send it to the printer. After um, 
printing the deposit summary if you choose to you can go ahead and close the make deposits window make sure you do hit save and close um, if you have not done so then if you're in following along with chapter 3 the next time you um, get into QuickBooks actions is up on page 3.15 we're gonna go ahead and learn how to write some checks so I'm gonna click write checks and that's gonna open up the the uh, write checks window notice that my bank account needs to be selected it should default into the 10100 you're gonna go ahead and put in the date of 12 15 17 you're going to write this check out to Kershaw computer services notice when I start to type it automatically fills in because they're already an account in my a vendor in my list the amount of the check is three hundred dollars um, as I tab through it does then allow me to edit the address if I need to I don't need to I'm gonna come down and choose the account that it needs to go into notice that this one defaulted in as computer repairs because that is the account we have set Kershaw computer services to default into notice that the three hundred dollars automatically carries down here um, that's the only check that I am going to to need today so I'm going to go ahead and click the print button and I actually do want to print it later it should come up and ask me to print check number it's at 10008 I'm gonna click OK there's different types of checks you can print again this isn't something that we can actually save um, as a PDF so there's really no need for us to actually print it if you want to though that is how where you would do it after you've um, pr printed the check you can go ahead and save and close um, do you want to record your changes yes you do and it should take you back to the home then we're going to go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the journal which we actually should be able to save so we're going to go into the reports and we're going to Oops, we do that through the reports window, I believe, is how your book has taught you. Then we're going to go to the accountant uh, and taxes reports. And we want the journal. We want the date range of the journal to be 1215 to 1215. So I'm going to run the journal. And I'm going to go ahead and change the date range here to be. 12 15 17 to 12 15 17 and I should see my um, one check that I wrote that day for three hundred dollars to Kershaw computer supply um, I did not put the correct date on the rock castle I should have so I'm um, had that also for 12 15 so I'm gonna go ahead and go back now I'm gonna go ahead and get out of the reports I'm gonna go back to my record deposits I'm going to go to the previous deposit and I'm going to change the date here from 12-15-16 to 12-15-17. I want to record those changes and save and close. And now if I went back to the journal under Accountant and Taxes, there's the journal. I'm going to run it. I'm going to change that date range to be 12 15 17 to 12 15 17 and I should now see both the $72,000 deposit and the $300 check so that should be like the pictures at the bottom of 318 and 319 um, I can then customize that report by applying a filter to it so to do that I'm going to go ahead and click customize report the modify report will pop up I'm going to go ahead and go to filters and I'm going to change this from from uh, the name drop down I'm going to choose got to find name there we go name I'm going to choose Kershaw nope Kershaw computer supplies got to get down to my here we go to my vendors there we go Kershaw computer supplies click OK and now it should narrow it down so that means that I've customized the report I've got the Rock Castle deposit for the correct date but now I only see the Kershaw because I filtered the report accordingly um, I can go ahead and click OK or save that report if, if that was required by going maximize that by going to the print and save as PDF and after I've saved it I can close the report and close the underlying reports window which should take me back to the home 
Finally, I'm going to go ahead and go through how to reconcile bank statements. To do that, still I'm in the banking area, I'm going to go ahead and click reconcile. This will open up the um, rank reconciliation. The bank statement we're going to reconcile is on page 3.22. So I need to look first to make sure that my beginning balance does match. If I reconcile the previous month, which I did, the the previous balance should always match. I'm going to go ahead and put in the ending balance according to the bank statement, 67281.02. If there's a service charge, which there is, of this case of $10, I'm going to put that in. The date of the service charge was 11 2017. Um, the statement date is 11 2017. The service charge um, should go into the account of bank service charges that should default in as that account but if it doesn't you'll need to select it from the drop down and then go ahead and click continue. This will then take me to um, the various checks and deposits that need that could put that I have deposited or written so I basically go through the statement and I see that check 433 and 436 have cleared check 451 and 460 have cleared. So I go ahead and check those off. If I look down here in the bottom right hand corner, keeping my service charge in mind, my ending balance per QuickBooks is 6728102. My cleared balance is 6728102 with a difference of zero. So I, because there is a difference of zero, I know that everything matches. So I can go ahead and hit reconcile now. Once I've pushed Reconcile Now, it should again pop up, ask me if I want the summary, the detail, or both the summary and the detail reconciliation statements. Let's go ahead and look only at the detail one. Detail, display, and notice, and I'm going to go ahead and say, you don't need to show me any of this in the future. And here's my reconciliation detail. So this is what cleared. These are all the things that I have outstanding still that are uncleared transactions and again if this was a requirement for the I, I would save it as a PDF if it was something I was supposed to turn in. Um, whether or not you choose to highlight the items that they specify is your own choice. I'm going to go ahead and close that and lastly I'm going to learn how to enter credit card charges. This begins on page 3.29. From the banking window I click on enter credit card charges. I'm going to put who I purchased it from I purchased this from Kershaw Computer Supplies on 12-15-17. The amount of the purchase was $50. If I want to put in any type of a memo, I can. In this case, I purchased a trackpad. It needs to go into some type of an account that it's going to be expensed into. They want me to expense this one into office supplies. Then I'm, um, the $50 that I typed here should automatically carry down to here. It is possible to split it. Maybe I wanted 25 of it to go to office supplies and the other 25 to go to uh, computer supplies. So I would do something like this. And I would come in here. I don't recall the, there we go. And I would do the other $25 like that. So I can split it, but in this case it's not split. So I want to go ahead and take that back to 50 and go ahead and just cut that out of there. Office supplies and there's no more credit card charges so I'm going to click save and close. And that concludes the chapter 3 example.